Queen of Physics, Ha Wu Qian Xiong, helped unlock the secrets of the atom. Written by Teresa Robeson. Illustrated by Rebecca Huang. Queen of Physics. In China, in the small town of Lu He, the Wu family celebrated the birth of a child. The child was a girl. A girl! What would become of her? In those days, girls were not sent to school, not considered as smart as boys, and certainly not encouraged to be scientists. But Mama and Baba Wu did not feel that way. They believed girls should go to school and could become anything they wanted to be. They knew their daughter would be smart and brave, that she would make a difference in the world. Baba named her Qian Xiong, which means courageous hero. Even before Wu Qian Xiong arrived in the world, Baba had quit his job as an engineer and opened a school just for girls. Mama wore out her shoes trudging to every house in Liu He to urge families to educate their daughters. So when Qian Xiong was ready, a school was waiting for her. Baba was the principal and Mama the teacher, teaching little girls to read and write and count. Baba and Mama were courageous too as they showed their daughter the way. Soon enough, Qian Xiong had learned everything she could from her parents' school. She knew how to count and to add, subtract, multiply, divide. She knew how to read and write hundreds of Chinese words with their strong dots, angled lines, and wispy tails. Qian Xiong was ready for more. But in the 1920s, the next closest girls' school was in the city of Suzhou, 50 long miles of bumpy, dusty country roads away. She would have to live there far from her family and could only go home for winter and summer vacations. Mama wept, Baba worried, but they knew their daughter had to brave the world to grow. Qian Xiong knew it too, so off she went. The school offered two programs, teacher training and academic. Qian Xiong picked the free teacher training program, but she peeked into the academic program textbooks and saw that they covered so much more. Science wasn't just science. It was biology and chemistry and physics, all connected by the lovely language of mathematics. And oh, physics! Physics, the study of the very matter and energy around her, the study of things that could be seen or felt, heat, sound, light, electricity, and motion, and of things too minuscule to be seen or felt, atoms and even tinier parts of atoms. Physics captured her heart. During the day, Qian Xiong attended her own classes. At night, she studied the academic textbook she borrowed from friends. She called it self-learning. It was a habit she would keep up for the rest of her life. Her classmates noticed that Qian Xiong worked extra hard and was not afraid of challenges. They asked her to be their leader in there underground 
group to fight against the government. Citizens were not allowed to say what they wanted. If they supported the wrong political party or said the wrong thing or happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, they could be punished, perhaps even killed by the government, by the warlords, by rich and powerful foreigners who lived there. The students wanted someone brave to lead them. They asked Qian Xiong, what would she do? What could she do? Baba had named her Courageous Hero. She would live up to her name. With her days full of classes, homework, secret studying on her own, and leading student protests and strikes, Qian Xiong had little time to miss her family. The years flew by. Now 17 years old, she graduated with top grades. It would have been easy to go home, but she took the harder path and traveled to Nanjing, three times farther from home than she had ever gone before to attend the National Central University where she immersed herself in her favorite subject, physics. Once again, her hard work and determination made her a leader among the students. Wu Qian Xiong led the march to General Chiang Kai-shek's headquarters where she and her classmates urged his government to resist Japanese invaders just before the start of World War II. Like a seed that must fly far to flourish, Chiang Xiong set forth once more in 1936, this time to Berkeley, California, thousands of miles across the ocean. She was going to continue studying the physics of atoms. Scientists understood atoms, but not completely. If people knew how atoms split, they could use them in new inventions and technologies, maybe even help doctors treat sick people. She focused on beta decay, where a nucleon inside an atom broke into opposite nucleon an electron or a positron, and a neutrino. It was like opening one present and getting three different gifts inside. After California, Chiang Xiong went to Columbia University in New York, where she continued to explore beta decay. She was careful. She was precise. She conducted experiment after experiment until she had a deeper understanding of beta decay than just about anyone else. Her reputation grew and physicists who couldn't solve their own problems came to her for help. Scientist Enrico Fermi said that electrons should have had faster speeds when they burst out of the neutron during beta decay. He couldn't prove it. Nobody could. But Qian Xiong could. Because she understood beta decay so well, she knew what to look for. Because she was such a careful researcher, she was able to run a difficult experiment that proved Fermi right. Many people thought that Qian Xiong should have won the Nobel Prize for this work, but she did not receive it. When two physicists, Yang Chen Ning and Li Sung Gao, questioned something many scientists believed, that nature did not distinguish between right and left, a concept of symmetry called parity, they asked Qian Xiong to investigate. Because she had worked on parity in beta decay, she knew just what to do. To focus on the project, she even canceled a trip to China 
a rare chance to see her parents for the first time since she had left home for the United States. Her hard work paid off. Her results proved them right. For this, Yang and Li, but not Qian Xiong, won a Nobel Prize. Another two physicists, Richard Feynman and Murray Another two physicists, Richard Feynman and Marie Gelman, asked her to check their hypothesis about a special expression of beta decay. In her usual thorough way, Qian Xiyong ran experiments and confirmed their idea. Many scientists praised her for this important finding. Yet, for the third time, she did not get the Nobel Prize. Sometimes, Qian Xing did not get the job she wanted either because she was a woman, because she was Asian. Was she sad? Yes. Was she disappointed? Often. Was she discouraged? Occasionally. But she did not let those feelings stop her from doing what she loved because Baba always said, Ignore the obstacles. Just put your head down and keep walking forward. There was only one obstacle she could not overcome. Because of World War II, the political unrest in China afterward, and her focus on her work, Qian Xiong was not able to return to see her parents before they died. My heart was breaking, she wrote to a friend when she could not attend Baba's funeral. Still, in her new home in the United States, Qian Xiong continued on her courageous path. She fought prejudice against women and Asians and became such an exceptional physicist that the Smithsonian Magazine called her the first lady of physics research and Newsweek declared her the Queen of Physics. And that is how a small girl from a faraway village in China went to school, proved herself as smart as any boy, learned to be a scientist, and even became a queen. Music